Hi, welcome to 10 Minute Violin. We're so glad to have you join us here today. I'm Miguel Ramirez, and this is the live stream training session for our first 10 minute practice video titled Violin Boeing Fundamentals Overview. Uh, I want to make sure everyone has a good understanding of our format here at 10, Viol 10 Minute Violin. Uh, first of all, I want to clarify that this session here is not the 10 minute practice video itself. This is the training session where we'll explain in detail how to best approach the material presented in our Violin Boeing Fundamentals Overview 10 minute practice video. Um, so it's important to watch this training session at least once, for those of you who are, might be catching the replay, uh, before following along with the 10 minute practice video uh, so you can optimize your time spent with it. Um, there will also be a question and answer time at the end of this training session uh, for those of you who are tuning in live. Um, we anticipate this training session to last about one hour and the separate the separate 10 minute practice video will be available on our YouTube channel directly following this session at four o'clock Pacific time. So an easy way to think about it is if you view this live stream training session as your lecture or your class uh, and the separate 10 minute practice video as your lab or like your homework, um, that's, that's a good way of, of thinking about our format. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce my brother and co-host of 10 Minute Violin, John Ramirez. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's nice seeing everybody. Um, uh, I just wanted to let you know that I'm going to be basically doing the back end of this, uh, this show, uh, mounting the cameras and the, and the sound and the graphics and so on and so forth. So uh, I just want to kind of just get in there a little bit, and I'm going to send you back over to uh, Miguel. Okay, and um, if anybody's on the chat, uh, please feel free to say hi and introduce yourself. Um, looks like we have a couple of people here. Um, so we have Christine, uh, hello from Orange County, California. Um, and we have Elizabeth, uh, hello from San Diego. Hi, Elizabeth, hi, Christine. And Jason, hi from San Diego. Hey, Jason. Alfredo. Um, and, uh, not sure where you're from, probably, okay, so, uh, Ciudad Guzman, Jalisco, hi, so somebody from Mexico, awesome. So that's all I have right now. All right. So, um, so, okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to give you a brief overview of the violin bowing fundamentals, including the bow hold. Um, how to develop a straight bow, bow placement on the string, bow arm levels, and what we call the three-point bow draw, uh, which combines the straight bow with the bow arm levels for reliable bowing motions on each string. Uh, we hope this information will be valuable for you no matter what level you're on at the violin and also will be helpful for those of you who are viola students. This is going to be a fast-paced training session and a lot of different information will be covered. Uh, the goal is to get a basic understanding and experience with the main aspects of bowing. Please don't worry if you don't understand it all right away. You can replay this session as many times as you need. Uh, rest assured in the upcoming training sessions and practice videos, we'll slow down and focus more in detail on each aspect presented here. Uh, you can submit your questions in the chat at any time during the training session, and we'll get to as many as we can after we finish covering all the material. Um, since there is about a 15 second delay between broadcasting live in our studio and when you receive it at home, try to submit your questions before the end of the three point bow draw section of the training to make sure that we see them. And the last thing before we dive into the material, uh, if you find our content helpful, I'd like you to remind you to subscribe, hit the bell to be notified every time we release a new video, and like and share with your friends. Okay, so first um, we'll talk about the importance of correct right hand bow hold. And so there's nothing more fundamental to bowing than how you hold the bow. Uh, there's a whole spectrum of possible ways to hold the bow. 
and you never know, you know, you know if, you, if you never knew what a violin was, if you never knew what a bow was, you might just want to hold the bow, you know, by just grabbing it like this. Um, you know, is it possible to play like this? Well, maybe you can learn how to make a decent tone on one note somehow, but uh, you won't really be able to play much music this way. And so, you know, that's just giving you an extreme example of how not to hold the bow. Um, but so how do we hold the bow in order to play successfully? To answer that question, let me give you two principles to think about first. Uh, the first principle is this, everything we do with the violin needs to work in conjunction with how the body moves and not work against it. This is so we can avoid pain and injury. And the second principle would be this, everything we do with the body needs to work in conjunction with how the violin works so that way we can produce good tone and beautiful music. So when we think about the development of violin technique throughout history in light of those two principles, we can then understand why there's only a very small range of what are considered acceptable bow holds with very, very slight differences between them. Uh, today, we won't go into all those variances within that, that small range, again, which are extremely slight. Uh, I'm simply going to teach what we consider to be our standard bow hold here, and it's one that we find works best for most people. So start here so you can create a baseline for yourself, and most likely it'll be everything you need. Later, if you want to explore little adjustments to it, you have a home base to work from. And finally, I can't stress this enough, getting the bow hold right is the key to unlock all the rest of uh, what we'll begin covering today. So first, we're going to introduce the thumb position on the bow. Thumb position on the bow. Um, I'm going to show you, I have some markings on, on my fingers here. I want you to focus in on the thumb here. And so I have a, a marking on my thumb where the bow contacts uh, the finger here. And so it's the tip of the thumb, but notice it's on the inside corner of the tip. In other words, inside corner meaning the corner closest to the palm here. And so we're going to just palpate that. I know you don't have these markings on your hand right now, but I want you to at least visualize it on my hand and then palpate that same corresponding mark on your thumb, on your right hand thumb. Now I'd like to show you where the, um, the thumb corresponds to where it's actually placed on the bow, and that's this corresponding marking right here on the bow. And so notice this is covering part of the end of the, the frog there, and then the stick, the bow stick itself, and then also um, part of the, the bow grip, the leather grip there. And so our exercise in our 10-minute ten, ten practice video, it's our first exercise in there, it's uh, going to be the uh, bow lifts, and we're going to link the ring, uh, we're going to link a ring of our left hand thumb and index fingers like this with the tip of the bow. So we're not really actually holding the bow, it's just linked together there. And so if you're doing it right, the bow should just swing there. You want to make sure that the stick of the bow is on your right hand side. We're going to hold that about a foot away, our left hand about a foot away from us, and we're going to be about the level of your forehead here. And we're letting that bow just hang there. We're going to take the thumb and we're going to make sure that thumb is hooked. And uh, we're going to lift, take that thumb and we're going to put the two corresponding marks together. So the marking on my thumb and the marking on the bow there. And we're going to simply lift that bow 90 degrees like this with that hooked thumb. So now you might fumble a little bit with this at first, but I want you to keep trying. The more you try, it, you'll get it pretty soon. You know, you just keep trying it 
Don't worry if you're completely fumbling around. Um, just keep trying. After a while, it will become comfortable, and this is when you know you have a reliable position with your, with your thumb. Next, we're going to look at the bow hand form, so the rest of the fingers besides the thumb. How are those contacting the bow? So um, I'm going to show you the places where the fingers will contact the stick of the bow. And there's going to be two caveats I'll share with you later. But I just want to show you, first of all, the lines on my fingers where the bow actually contacts the fingers. So it's a lot. That's a lot of contact point. Um, we're going to do this. We're going to palpate the lines on those fingers to get used to how it will feel on the bow. Okay? So let's look at my, we already looked at the thumb. Let's look at my index finger here. And so these lines here look like they're kind of disjointed, but I'll show you as I curve my index finger, you'll see that it makes a straight line across. And I'm not sure how well you can see that. But the reason why they look separate like this is because the finger is usually curved like this. So they appear separate. So this is where the bow contacts it. And it, notice it goes all the way to the side of the index finger there. And then past this joint here, it's kind of diagonal. And then on the very last part of the finger. It's still diagonal this way here. And so you can palpate on your own hand where these corresponding places are. Let's look at the middle finger. Um, there's a kind of an interesting pattern here. And what that is, that little notch there on the middle finger is actually the notch for the bow here. So here's where the stick is, right in that middle part of the middle finger. And then it extends down, and the frog is going to be contacting all this place. So you can, again, palpate along with me. So we can feel where the bow contacts the fingers. The ring finger is pretty simple. It's just straight down here. Again, it looks a diagonal here because of the way my hand is going to be. My fingers are going to be diagonal on the bow. And so here's the stick here, and then it follows down to the frog. And then finally, the pinky. The pinky is, uh, again, on the inside part of the tip of the pinky. So just like the point on the tip of the thumb was on the inside, closer to the palm, the pinky also it's going to be inside corner closer to the palm and so you can palpate that along with me there the pinky and the thumb are just two points just kind of two dots there it's not like the rest of the fingers here okay now i want to show you the corresponding lines on the bow where the fingers will be resting on the bow so if you notice the index finger here we went over the thumb already the index finger goes about the middle or even closer to the end of that silver part of the winding all the way in the top of the stick and then it wraps around in a diagonal way all the way to the bottom of the stick and that's where the index finger goes completely on the stick of the bow the middle finger if you notice, it's right across from where the thumb was. So partially on the stick, partially on the end of the frog, and partially on the, uh, the grip, the leather grip. OK? And that goes diagonally this way. And if you can see there, it's, it's going over that little boat, that frog notch right there. So um, that's where that corresponding notch is in my middle finger. The next one is the ring finger. You notice that it's just kind of like a straight line there. And that just contacts the bow again diagonally here. 
from the stick all the way down and covering the eye of the frog. I painted this over so you don't see the eye of the frog. It would be right there. Um, and, uh, and I'll show you on the other side of the bow. That's what the eye of the frog would look like on your bow. Um, but, uh, but here on this side, I'm, I'm actually covering that with the ring finger. Diagonal. And then finally, the tip of the pinky goes about there on the, on the stick. Again, just a little dot. And where that is, it's, you know, kind of corresponds to like the end of the, the frog closer to the, to the, the screw here. But notice how it is on top of the, the frog itself here. I notice a lot of times with beginners, they might even try to put their pinky at the very end where the screw is. And that, that's a little bit too far because it's going to either stretch your pinky too far or it's going to throw your other fingers out of whack. So this is a good place right there. So um, those are all the places where the, on the bow where the fingers contact. And we're gonna, uh, you're going to find those exercises on the video as well. Uh, so you can follow through with your 10 minutes per day. Um, the, the angle of the thumb stays the same like we did with the first exercise. So however you have it with the angle of the thumb in the first exercise, that's perfect. And then you put the other fingers um, around the bow. So I'll show you how to put each of those fingers there. Index finger wrapping around the stick. This one across from the middle finger. Uh, I'm sorry, across from the thumb. Ring finger covering the eye. And then the pinky, the inside corner. All right, so um, here's the two caveats that I, I had um, mentioned before. And so the first one is that these placements are general, okay? Now, hand shapes and sizes vary from person to person. So again, you know, like it may not be exactly these places here. Um, so it's up to you to take these positions and adjust them as needed to the length and shape of your fingers. These placements are m specific to my shape of hand and, and size of hand. Um, the second one would be that these placements are flexible during the bow stroke. So the bow will rest in the hand slightly differently at the frog than it will at the tip and everywhere in between. We want to allow for those slight movements within the bow stroke so we don't become rigid in our playing. And conversely, we don't want our bow hold to migrate outside the boundaries of what's considered that acceptable bow hold. So a good rule of thumb is that the bow hold you have at the end of your piece should look the same as the bow hold you began with. Everything you do between those two times must allow for some flexibility. So, you know, if we're starting like this, we don't want to end up like this. We, uh, we want to end just how we started. Because, um, again, we don't want to go outside the boundaries. So next would be bow placement on the string. When your bow form feels comfortable in your hand, you're ready to try it out on the string. So before you actually place it on the string, the first question you need to ask is this. Um, where's the best point within the length of the string to place the bow hair? So I'll give you two answers to this question. A long answer and a short answer. So first, the long answer. Um, that depends. It depends on where you, you know, where you place the bow on the string. depends on what kind of sound you're looking to make. So if I want to make uh, sound effects, um, I'll place it maybe between the tailpiece and the bridge, like between here, right? So this might, that might give me some sound effects. Um, or maybe I'll place it all the way in the middle of the fingerboard or something like that. That's again, some sound effect. Um, but for regular playing, you're going to generally want to reference one of five placements between the bridge and the fingerboard. Those are commonly known as sounding points or bow lanes. Using this small, small range of the string length will allow you to access the full range of volumes and tone characters for the majority of the standard violin repertoire. The catch is, for each change of sounding point, you'll also need to make corresponding adjustments to the speed of the bow stroke and the leverage or weight you put into the bow. 
can be a long process to fully absorb these concepts and are definitely beyond the scope of what we can cover today. But the reason I went into all of this is to give you an overview of your long-term goal, as well as provide a framework in which to understand the short answer. So now for the short answer. The best place for the bow to contact the string is halfway between the bridge and the fingerboard. So here's the bridge, here's the fingerboard, halfway. This is the most neutral place since it gives you a medium volume, uh, requires only a medium speed bow stroke, and a medium bow leverage or weight. So if we were to compare it to our speaking voice, this bow placement would be like a conversational volume level. Uh, it's not shouting, it's not whispering. Uh, you can play a lot of music with your bow at that contact point and it's gonna sound just great. So with our good bow hand form, We'll practice placing the bow on the string silently in a few different sounding points. So no matter which sounding point on the string we choose, we'll always choose the middle of the bow to contact the string for these exercises. So since the middle sounding point can be hard to locate, let's pick a string and place the bow right up against the bridge. So again, if you notice, um, that marking on my bow marks the middle of the bow. And so we're right up against the bridge. Now let's pick up the bow and place it right next to the fingerboard. Uh, you'll know if you're in the right place if you see the arch of the fingerboard directly underneath the bow hair. So now let's look at the string and visualize those two places that we just did. Um, if you need, you can repeat the exercise of placing the bow at those two sounding points again. So once you have a good idea of where those two places are, try to visualize a third point exactly halfway between them and place your bow right there. So visualizing that point right and halfway in between, and I'm placing my bow right there. So this is your neutral sounding point. Also, I want you to notice that the bow stick is right where the top of the F holes are, right? It's going right at the very, very top there, okay? So that's your neutral sounding point. Now that we have a, um, you know, a good bow hand form and a good placement on the string, let's explore how those things relate to the right arm as a whole. So without the instrument, Let's practice the primary motion we use to change, change strings with the right arm. So you're going to let your right arm hang naturally at your side. We're going to lift up your hand to try to reach the ceiling like this. Now what happens? Your arm goes to a 180 degree angle from where it started. And then we're going to go ahead and bring it back down. And we'll do this a couple more times. You're just trying to lift your hand all the way to the ceiling and back down. So notice that mentally, we think of our hand as leading the motion because that's a part of the body we're trying to get to the ceiling. And then the rest of the arm just simply follows it. We easily notice what the arm is doing, but let's also explore the less obvious motions of the collarbone and the shoulder blade that happen naturally when we reach our hand towards the ceiling. So go ahead and place your left hand over your collarbone and let's try the exercise again. Notice how you can feel the slight up and down movement of the collarbone in your left hand. And the collarbone's not trying to do anything, it's just following naturally, just like the rest of the arm. Uh, feeling the shoulder blade is a little bit more difficult, but we're gonna, you're gonna try to reach the nail side of your left hand fingertips around your back and up towards your right shoulder blade. And we're gonna try the exercise again and notice how the shoulder blade is moving up and away from your fingertips. It's, it's moving around the ribs. I'm gonna try this exercise again. And I can feel how that shoulder blade is going away from my fingertips. 
Uh, if it's too hard for you to reach behind your back like that, um, you know, just reach your left hand around your shoulder blade from the front and try the exercise. You're not going to feel as much range of motion this way, but you could still feel how it's moving naturally along with the rest of the arm. Now, with our right arm hanging down one more time, we're going to bend that arm from the elbow like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try lifting the elbow up to the ceiling and back down. You won't get it up to the same 180 degree angle like before, but that's not important. What is important is to notice that every motion of the arm, collarbone, and shoulder blade is exactly the same as before. But the difference now is that the motions are being led by the elbow and not by the hand. That's a very important distinction because when we go to the violin and we practice basic string changes at the middle of the bow or the frog, we need to lead the motion with the elbow, not the hand. So now for these uh, motions to translate into good string changes, we need to first get the correct relationship between the hand, the forearm, and the elbow. When the bow is placed on any string at the middle of the bow, like we had practiced, the forearm needs to be horizontal. You have a 90 degree angle here. And the hand needs to be in line with the forearm. So the forearm needs to be horizontal with the ground. And the, uh, the hand needs to be horizontal with the forearm. So I could even, you know, I can visualize something placed across my forearm and my hand, and as I lead with my elbow up and down, the hand and the forearm follow. So again, I'm leading with the elbow up and down, hand and forearm follow, and it always stays horizontal. I like to imagine a little guy standing on, on top of here, and he's just riding the elevator up and down like this. Notice that he doesn't fall down this way when you, know, when you go up and down. He stays right up like that. Uh, so that's the rule for the hand and forearm when you're changing strings at the middle of the bow. And I'll show you here with the bow on the string. So we're in the E string here. This is horizontal. As I change strings, it's still horizontal. All the way to the G string, still horizontal there. And then back. So this is your basic motion. And I'm leading that again, not with the hand, but with the elbow. This rule changes and is more complex for string changes at the frog and the tip. But before we get into that, let's talk about how to draw the bow across a single string. So this is going to be introducing your straight bow. Now the number one goal of drawing the bow is pretty simple in theory. It's just to make sure that the bow stays perpendicular to the strings and parallel to the bridge at every point in the bow stroke from frog to tip. This is what we call having a straight bow. Having a straight bow is the foundation upon which you can make a good tone on the violin. If you're ever struggling with making good tone, this is the first thing you should check. So let's start exploring how to draw a straight bow. And we'll start by placing the violin down on a table with the shoulder rest on. If you don't have a shoulder rest, uh, place the violin on a pillow or secure it with your hand so it doesn't rock back and forth when you're drawing the bow across the strings. Uh, for this exercise, we're not going to hold the bow in the traditional way, um, but just with a few fingers and allowing the bow's natural weight to just rest on the string like this. And from this perspective, we can see very clearly if the bow is perpendicular to the strings and parallel with the bridge. So we're going to try just moving it across the strings like this. And no matter where we are, we want to make sure that it stays parallel with the, the bridge and perpendicular with the strings. And we're in that middle sounding point. And so again, you can use that, the top of the F holes as your guide there. If you start going closer to the, the fingerboard, you can always bring it right back. And if you start going to the bridge, you can again just bring it right back to the middle, like that. So 
So I want you to get a feel for what the, the, the string feels like and how everything sounds. Um, and, uh, you know, I think if you can do it from this perspective, you can actually hear like what a good tone is and you can feel it on the bow. Uh, and also how the string responds with what your motions are doing. It doesn't fight against you, it works with you. Okay, so now here's where this simple straight bow gets a little bit more complicated and that's drawing the bow actually in position. So for our hand to allow the bow to stay straight throughout the bow stroke, it requires us to make straight lines back and forth with our hand. These are not natural motions for the arm and hand, and there's pretty much nothing we do in ordinary life that requires these motions. So, um, you know, generally you, your motion would be more of like a circle naturally with your hand. We don't want that for violin. Um, the next few exercises I'm going to have you do are going to make learning to draw a straight bow way easier than it would be without it. Um, these exercises require the use of a couple items that you may not just have lying around the house, so you'll probably need to purchase them. Uh, we have the links to the items below, so you can order them uh, or find something similar on your own. Um, you can actually, the links are from Home Depot, so I'd, you know, it's easy enough just to go there. It's probably better. You can get it the same day. Um, but here's what you'll need. A, a dowel. It's a three-quarter inch dowel and a small plastic tube that's just a little bigger than the size of the dowel. Uh, it, this is, a, I think, one and a half inch. Um, and so that the dowel can slide inside of it. So together, that these items cost about $4. That's it. Um, so about $4, you could potentially save yourself months or even years of trial and error with the bow and frustration with your tone and ease of playing because you have no solid reference of how it feels to play with a straight bow. And really that's what it comes down to is feel. Um, when the violin's in position, we can't see it in the way that we did when it was on the table like this. So feeling how the arm behaves when the bow is drawn straight is essential to your success. Um, carefully doing the correct motions over and over using the dowel as a guide will reinforce those brain connections associated with those motions and soon playing with a straight bow will feel much more normal. So let's get into the exercises. The first one will be holding the dowel with your left hand and sliding the tube along the dowel with your right hand. So it's a simple straight line that you're making with your right hand. And it's not going to feel the same as the bow, but you just kind of do your best to try to imitate that bow hold that we learned with the thumb and the fingers. The goal here is just to use, you know, get used to making straight lines with your right hand so you can, you can get creative and you can hold the dowel at different angles like this. over your shoulder this way. You can do all kinds of things here. Um, and uh, you can even, if you want to reverse it and try it with your left hand, I know we don't bow with the left hand, but that helps you wrap your mind around the concept that might be helpful for you too. Um, the only thing I would encourage with this is not to hold the dowel too far away from your body where you have to straighten out your arm too much. We want the elbow to be able to bend and all that when we do the exercise. The next exercise is just to do it in reverse where we're holding the tube steady with our left hand and putting the dowel with the right hand. So this is more, this is closer to actually having the bow. Um, and we're going to do exactly the same thing here. And we can do different angles with that. And if you notice that once the dowel gets closer to the tube like that, the hand gets closer to the tube, you can feel some of the weight of the dowel. Again, that's closer to what you're going to feel with the bow. Okay. Uh, and again, you could reverse hands if you want to, if that helps you get a, a different perspective on it. Next, we're going to put the tube over the strings of the violin and we're going to attach it with a rubber band. Okay. And this is actually three rubber bands. There's a link to these two from Office Depot. Um, size 32 rubber bands. This is just kind of what we had lying around works well enough, but with these, you're going to have to, if it's size 32, 
You're going to have to link probably about three of these together for a full size instrument. Um, if you have half size or different um, fractional sizes, uh, you, you have to just kind of figure out how many you need. Um, but I'll show you how to link the rubber bands here if you've never done this before. You just take two rubber bands, you put one uh, inside the other like this, and then you simply pull that through in on itself like this, and then and then just pull those together pretty tight there and that links two rubber bands together and again I just take another third one and I link this one to one of those pull that together and voila I have three rubber bands linked together here um, if this is too long, you can always shorten it by just kind of tying one end, or you can get creative with, you can figure out how, how it will work for your instrument. But this works pretty well for a full, full size instrument. Um, we're going to put the tube over the strings like this. We're going to put it in that middle position, uh, the middle sounding point right between the fingerboard and the bridge. And um, just going to take one of these rubber band ends, fit it over part of the dowel there, and I reach underneath here. This might take a little getting used to. First time you do this. I'm going to try to get the tube to where it's over the middle two strings, the D and the A strings. And I think that's pretty good right there. Once you get the hang of it, it becomes a lot easier. Pull this over just a little bit more. That's too much. Okay, so notice notice that the tube is um, the tube is uh, parallel with the bridge and perpendicular with the strings, right? So that's important. That whatever you end with that it uh, looks like this and back looks like that okay so um, from there we're gonna continue that same exercise where we're putting the dowel inside the tube but instead of holding the tube with our left hand the violins now gonna hold that tube okay so we're gonna take that dowel in the tube there and now we're going to do that same exercise. And there you go. This is this is a straight bow right here. Wonderful. So we're not quite finished yet though. So you got your straight bow. In addition to have a straight bow, we're going to need to make sure that the rest of the arm, the rest of the right arm is moving correctly. And so to get that arm moving correctly, we'll revisit the arm levels on each string, but now at the, the frog and the tip. So this is bow arm level part two here. And uh, remember the bow arm levels at the middle of the bow? The forearm and uh, the hand were horizontal and stayed horizontal for every string, right? So at the frog, this is going to change. Uh, one of the strings is going to be horizontal, and that's going to be the E string. So as I go to the E string, I remain horizontal with my forearm like this at the frog. When we tilt towards the A string, that's where, it, that's where that horizontal part ends. We tilt towards the A string, and now my arm is forearm is sloping down towards the hand. When I tilt towards the D string, again at the frog, that is still sloping down towards the hand. And notice that I'm leading everything with my elbow. I'm not leading it with my hand. G string, I'm sloping way down towards the hand with my forearm. Okay, so that's the that's the the steepest slope right there, the G string. So again, to recap, the frog E string were horizontal with the forearm, A string a little bit slanting down towards the hand, D string slanting down more towards the hand, and G string slanting down a lot towards the hand. Okay, 
So now we're going to go back to um, we're going to go back to the tip now. Um, and, and well, actually, you know what? Before we do that, I'm sorry, I had mixed around uh, things a little bit here. So before we do that, we're going to connect the dots. Okay, so. Where this is all going is that we learned two sounding or we learned two arm levels here for for the for the right arm, and we're just going to con connect those dots, right? So, in other words, on the E string, if I'm horizontal in the middle, like I am for every string, right, and I know that I'm also horizontal at the frog, I need to just move that whole forearm up like an elevator to the frog, and that's my bow stroke from the middle to the frog on the E string. If you're a violist, this would be the A string. Okay, so that one's easy. From middle to frog is just horizontal both ways on the E string. Now if I go to the A string, I'll start in the middle because that's always horizontal with the forearm. On the A string, we know that at the frog, we slope down towards the hand a little bit with the forearm. So I'm just going to have that in mind. I'm starting horizontal and then I get up sloping a little bit down and then back to horizontal here in the middle. Back to sloping, back to horizontal. On the D string again we're in the middle and everything's horizontal with the forearm and we know that at the frog it slopes down even more. So we'll go to that level and then we go back to the middle level and then back to the sloping of the frog. Good, and now we'll change again to the G string and the middle of the bow, forearms horizontal, and we know we slope way down when we get to the frog. So now there we go. Frog, here's the middle, horizontal forearm, frog slanting down a lot towards the hand and back to the middle. Okay, so, so far we've covered um, the lower half of the bow. Now to get to the upper half of the bow, let's talk about um, where the bow levels are for the, um, for the tip of the bow, okay? So when we change strings at the tip of the bow, since your arm is fully extended, you're going to actually lead the level changes of the arm now with the hand. So uh, before I was emphasizing when you're bending, you always change with the elbow and that's really important. But here when you're fully extended, uh, it would be awkward to lead it with the elbow at that point. So we're going to lead with the hand here. And this is the only position that the whole arm will follow. When it's bent, you try to lead with the hand, it doesn't do that anymore. So extended, um, the whole arm follows like this. Um, and so uh, if you're the, like, again, there's some caveats with that. If you're very tall, um, you can get to the tip of the bow while still having a bent elbow. And in that case, you're going to need to continue to lead your string changes from the elbow just as before. If you're on the shorter side, you may extend your arm all the way and maybe still not even reach the tip. And that's totally fine. You just kind of mark your adjusted, your adjusted tip and it's just not, it's going to be as far as you can get and that's not a big deal. Uh, the only thing I would suggest if you're doing that is find out also where the middle point is because that's going to have to be adjusted to where your, uh, your adjusted tip is. Okay, so um, that said, most people will have a full extension of the arm at the tip. So for the rest of this session, we'll refer to a full extension of the arm as the tip. Now this time I would like to start on the D string because the D string is where we're most horizontal uh, at the tip. Okay, so again, we're here in the middle of the bow, horizontal with the forearm. As we go to the tip on the D string, we're pretty horizontal still with it. So that's easy, horizontal to horizontal extended. Um, and then uh, when we go to the G string, this is going to start being a little bit different because we start horizontal in the middle, and then as we extend, what ends up happening is that that forearm this actually ends up slanting up towards the hand. So it's very unique. Uh, this is the only string where when you do a full extension to the tip, uh, your forearm actually slants up. Okay. This is really important. So uh, slanting up and then back to horizontal. All right, so um, now we just have the A and the E strings to work on. And these are pretty simple. We start horizontal in the middle again as we extend to the tip, the arm 
forearm simply slopes down towards the hand, back to horizontal, back sloping down towards the hand, and then on the E string, sloping way down to the hand, and back to horizontal, sloping way down to the hand, and back to horizontal. So um, that covers all the points here. So bow arm levels are essential to getting your complete bow stroke right on each string. So we went over uh, four times three, 12 different positions for your arm. You just need to memorize those and then connect the dots. That that's what leads us to the final portion, which is gonna be the three-point bow draw. So as we're doing the three-point bow draw, we just envision those three places. So if I'm at the E string here, I just think about where am I supposed to be at the frog? Horizontal. I draw horizontal to the middle and then sloping down with the forearm towards the hand here at the tip. Go to the middle and then follow through. And then once you have those three places in mind, you just simply play through them. And you can do that now without stopping. On the A string, I know that I'm slanting down towards the hand at the frog, come to horizontal, and then I slant down towards the hand at the tip. Horizontal, slanting down, horizontal, slanting down. All right, and the D string, again, starting in the middle here, horizontal, I know I slant down on the D string even more at the frog, and then horizontal at the tip, horizontal, slanting down, horizontal, follow through horizontal. Here at the tip, it could be possibly slanting down just a little bit on the D string, but we'll just think on a horizontal. It's, it's easier to think of it that way. Okay, and then on the G string, slanting way down, forearm towards uh, the, the hand of the frog. The middle, I'm horizontal. And then at the tip, what am I doing? I'm slanting up towards the hand. Totally different than the rest of of the strings. It's really important to get this G string right because uh, this is where a lot of the struggles happen at students of all levels. Um, and if you get this three-point bow draw right on the, the G string, you're going to have uh, a lot better time uh, playing things uh, on the G string and also um, connecting that and making smooth string changes with the rest of the strings. Um, I know a lot, know a lot of times um, students will get string changes between the E, A, and D pretty smooth, but then when it goes to the G, uh, funny things start to happen. So uh, it's really important to, to get these uh, things right. Okay, so that's all the material that is going to be in your 10-minute practice video for this week. Um, don't forget to uh, go to that every day. Like we say here, um, press play every day um, to do your 10 minutes on these exercises. And uh, I'd like to uh, open it up for a time of question and answers right now. Um, and so I'll turn it over to John. Okay. Well, uh, it looks like we had a few more people uh, that came on uh, after we started. Uh, you can actually say hi to those people real quick. Okay. But just a reminder about the 10-minute the video. I'll, s I'll put a link um, in the description of this video. Uh, so that way you know where to go for the 10 minute practice. Okay. Uh, here we have, let's see here, we left off here. Here we can see, oops, let me pass this over to. Hi, Calvin. Okay, and then we have. Hi, Anjali from San Diego. And uh, Livingston, somebody's from Livingston. Um, Boston. I had lived there for a little bit. All right. That's, that's all we have. As well, thanks far as for I joining bet. us, guys. Um, and uh, so if there's no questions, um, I can just kind of wrap things up. And I do want to remind you to, to go to your 10-minute practice video. Use that every day. Get your items as soon as possible um, so you can start using them right away. Um, and... Uh, if, uh, if you'd also like to book a private lesson with either myself or with John, um, we have the links below to do that. Um, and uh, I'd also try to remind you to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified every time we put out a new video. 
and uh, like and share with your friends. Um, and uh, uh, we'll release the, the practice video uh, at 4 o'clock Pacific time today. I'm not even sure what time it is right now, um, but that's going to be up on our YouTube channel at 4 o'clock uh, Pacific time. Thanks again for being with us today. Um, I really enjoyed this time, and we'll see you guys uh, next week. Got some more people there from San Diego, a lot of people from San Diego. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks again for, for joining us. Julian, Paul, uh, Alfredo, great class. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Press play every day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye. Oh,